Hey guys, today I am in this 2018 Range Rover Supercharged. It's the uh, mid-cycle update, the refreshed, updated model that they just recently released. I can already tell this is going to be an extremely comfortable and relaxing review because just being in a Range Rover is an extremely comfortable and relaxing experience. So for this updated mid-cycle refresh model, what did they change? A decent amount of things actually to improve the vehicle. The most obvious when you walk up to the vehicle from the outside are the changed headlights and taillights. They're updated to full LEDs now. The shape is slightly different. They also made subtle changes to the grille, minor uh, exterior styling changes. Overall though, the shape of the vehicle has not changed. The body panels, the doors, the shape is the same because it's a mid-cycle, not a completely brand new vehicle. On the inside, there are very significant changes that really add up to make this a much, much better luxury vehicle. One of the biggest downsides to the old, old I want to say, but the previous pre-refresh uh, Range Rover, this latest generation, was the infotainment was still essentially garbage. It was, it was quite bad. Jag Land Rover hasn't really ever had an excellent infotainment system. It's been marginally improved throughout the uh, last couple years. But this latest one, which I believe launched in the Velar with the dual touchscreen, is actually really, really nice. This top screen controls things like navigation, media, um, you can pinch to zoom and scroll around and it can actually rotate to uh, eliminate glare in case it's in a position where the sun is hitting it. The bottom screen controls things like climate, your uh, I think vehicle, we're playing on the seats, that's the main thing. You can click that and you can change your massage settings, your heated cooled settings. It is very crystal clear dis display and it responds very quickly. The graphics are very nice. It is a massive step up from the previous generation system. Other subtle changes to the interior, the new, I think the center display is slightly updated. They moved the uh, seat control buttons here. There's a different steering wheel with more crazy touch sensitive display buttons here. It feels much more modern and it all really just hinges around this center thing here, which really makes it usable as a technolo technological feature in a luxury vehicle. Performance wise, driving wise, uh, powertrain wise, minor changes. This is a 5 liter supercharged V8 model. I believe it makes something like 518 horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque, which is quite an ample amount. It is a big heavy vehicle, but this thing gets up and goes. Whew. Something about such a large vehicle with such an amount of mass and the inertia that you get when you start going, it seems to amplify the feeling of acceleration when such a big vehicle starts moving. Obviously, it's all-wheel drive. Land Rover touts their uh, off-road capability, all-terrain capability. You do have the still the auto terrain select mode. You can raise and lower the air suspension. Um, all-wheel drive mode is great. Kind of something with these Range Rovers, the accusation that a lot of people have is none of them really ever get utilized to the capability that they're built to. They brag about all this off-road um, technology and the fancy self-sensing terrain system. Nobody's going to use them. They get driven to the fancy mall and the fancy dinner and then gets home, pick up the kids from soccer practice, which is honestly what a lot of them get used as. And I mean, yes, that is almost not, a, I don't want to say a waste, but it's just the way it is. People like them for all the status, the luxury, the technology. Sure, the, the off-road stuff, maybe I can see it being used in snowy weather or maybe if they're going on a camping trip and need to get off, uh, get up a slightly muddy trail or something. But no, these won't ever be utilized the way a Jeep Wrangler would be used. That doesn't mean it's still not impressive and not cool to play around with. The air suspension that I just mentioned is also impressive. You can raise and lower the car. In the back, there's a button to change. You can, it's freaking, the rear went up by like probably three to four inches. I was like, whoa, it just keeps going and going. That's cool, assuming it doesn't break. I have heard of old uh, versions with air suspension failing. Um, let's see, what else is really cool? Driving wise, I mentioned the engine. It's got the eight speed auto, uh, automatic transmission. It shifts nice, cruising along. The air suspension absorbs bumps. You are riding along very nicely and comfortably, isolated from the world and the road. Something else that Land Rover has really worked on and they're really wanting to uh, publish is all of the new technology related to luxury and safety and convenience. So this car has the upgraded seats, 24 way I think, heated, cooled and massage. I'm currently, they're being cooled right now. I'm getting a massage, it's great, nice relaxing. Heated steering wheel, uh, there's a heads up display. From all the safety stuff, there's like lane assist, um, pedestrian all this and the sign reading you I, I don't have all of them memorized sorry there are just way too many I was scrolling through on the website I'm like okay I can't memorize all these 
It's impressive. So it is on par with the top of industry German uh, Mercedes vehicles, the Audi ones, in terms of all the technological luxury and safety features that are offered. Some are very, very useful. Some are slightly gimmicky. Like there is a gesture sunroof closing. You like go there, I think, and then see it starts closing. You can stop it like that, make it go back because pushing the button was too much trouble. You can swipe your fingers and it rec recognizes the gesture and starts closing the sunroof. Um, some cool features though, if you notice on the steering wheel here, this phone call button, apparently when you get a phone call, it lights up with a green and a, not a, yeah, green and a red to answer or hang up the phone call. These like touch things for volume are scroll sensitive. It's got a lot of tech. Hopefully it all remains working well. I'm starting to trust Land Rover Jaguar, I have a friend of an F-Type R, which has been great. The previous Range Rover um, that uh, my friend owned was not a problem. This one did have a very serious problem day after delivery, which uh, we talked about in the ownership perspective video. So check that out. It's actually very interesting to hear about that. But overall, they have really, really improved that. If we talk about value, a Range Rover is not a cheap vehicle, especially a supercharged V8 one. It, to the tune of this one was pretty much $130,000 and it was nicely optioned. This is not even a long wheelbase and it is not a autobiography version. So they get pretty, pretty expensive. But as befits that, I mean, if you're shopping in this segment, you're looking into top of the line like a Mercedes GLS or maybe a uh, G-Wagon. A Q7, I don't think gets up this high. Um, you're right below, I mean, not quite into Bentayga territory, but like there are these very luxurious, very expensive Range Rovers. You can get them in 200 grand. So what do you get for $130,000? Like everything. There, I can't really think of many things in this car, in this truck, I should call it, that um, it doesn't have. So at $130,000, if you have it, I would spend it because honestly, it's my personal favorite. Compared to the G-Wagon, it steers better, it handles better, it rides better, it's got a nicer interior. The G-Wagon just looks more badass and a little more unique from that aspect. The Range Rover is better in pretty much every regard as a luxury SUV. I love driving these things. Rolling around in one, you just feel like successful, like you're doing well and it's comfortable and does everything well. It emulates exactly the feeling that I get when I drive something like a S-Class or a 7 Series. You, what I always say about those is, you arrive at your destination more relaxed than when you left, because it just does everything so well. Excellent sound system with the upgraded Meridian. Only things maybe I would probably want autobiography because you get really cool interior options. And we will be doing an autobiography review, brand new Range Rover soon, as soon as Land Rover gets their stuff figured out and actually builds and delivers a car. What else is there? I mean, yeah, I think the value is compelling you i know we're gonna get some hate on this comment because it's a six-figure suv that a lot of people can't relate to but you have to understand what you get for it with the prestige the history the name the technology that comes with it i would say it is a decent value now do they hold value well eh, depreciation with anything of this high end would you buy a used one would i buy a used one maybe a cpo because you have to have a warranty. Like I already said, this one had problems. They do have a reputation for a reason, despite improving. I would be very cautious about that. Um, and also, this really does make the previous generation Range Rover look completely outdated. This new infotainment, the latest tech and uh, updates to the lights and stuff makes the old one look almost old, which is sad because it's like two years old. But I mean, get this. If you can, get one of these. This is really, really awesome. Hope to spend more time with this thing because I mean, I just love driving Range Rovers around. I, I personally, I'd sooner get like a luxury sedan or coupe first because I don't need the space yet. But as uh, later on at some point in my life, this would be cool. Imagine using this at your tow rig to tow things around. That would be awesome. Hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. Um, we're going to make a couple more fun videos involving this. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Comment below. Yep. Thanks for watching.